The Book of True Life, Teaching 1 of 366. The Master Teaches, The Three Ages and the Seven Seals. Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord says, In the beginning of time, I, as the Father, inspired in man the practice of righteousness. However, men departed from the divine mandates, falling into idolatry and abominable acts before me. The strong triumphed, the weak perished, and man took woman as a slave. It was necessary to convey to Moses the commandments of the law on Mount Sinai. In that law were the mandates by which the people of Israel should be guided. And in these they were told, He who kills will have the same sentence pronounced upon himself. He who steals will make restitution to his brother. He who causes harm shall pay an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The second era came to pass, and I manifested myself in Jesus to live among you. And in my word I said to you, If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the left. Forgive your enemies. And during the third era in which you live, I have come to say to you, If your father's killer, being persecuted by human justice, were to knock at your door, begging for help, what would you do? Protect him. In so doing, you would demonstrate that you have reached the spiritual evolution which enables you to comply with the divine mandates of your heavenly Father who commands you to love one another. To resurrect the spirits who have died to the life of grace, for every spirit will be saved. Today, I come to speak to your spirit and to reveal to you the content of the seven seals, the book of your history, of prophecy, of revelation and justice. It is I who has come to tell you that today you live in the period which pertains to the sixth seal. The year of 1866 designates the beginning of the Era of Light. I sent Elijah to remove the veil of mystery and introduce the period of my communication with mankind as the Holy Spirit. Elijah illuminated a man destined by me to be the forerunner. That chosen one, Roque Rojas, was he who listened from spirit to spirit to the voice of the prophet, who ordered him in my name to call and unite his brethren, because a divine revelation was about to illuminate the destinies of humanity. Roque Rojas, gentle and humble as a lamb, obeyed the spiritual voice, answering, God's will be done upon me. Roque Rojas assembled a group of men and women of faith and goodwill, and there, in the midst of his first gatherings, Elijah manifested himself through the faculty of the envoy, saying, I am Elijah the prophet, the same of the transfiguration on Mount Tabor. He gave instructions to the first disciples, at the same time that he proclaimed to them the era of spirituality, and he prophesied that the ray of light of the Divine Master would communicate with his people soon. On a day when the humble dwelling of Roque Rojas was full of faithful followers who believed the word of that man. Elijah descended to illuminate the mind of his spokesman, and inspired by me, he anointed seven of those believers, to whom he gave the representation, or symbolism, of the seven seals. Later, when that promised moment of my communication took place, I observed that out of those seven chosen, only one kept vigilant, awaiting the arrival of the pure spouse. And that heart was that of Damiana Oviedo, the maiden whose faculty was the first to receive the light of the divine ray, as a reward for her perseverance and her preparation.
Damiana Oviedo represented the sixth seal. It was one more proof that the light of the sixth seal illumines this era. During the second era, I found a woman's endearing reception, a maternal love, and also during this era, I rested in the chaste and pure heart of Damiana Oviedo. Her maidenly tenderness was maternal for the people of Israel, and through her guidance, I prepared the guides, spokesmen, and laborers. I allowed her to reach the threshold of an old age, and I said to her, You, who have risen like a fountain of love, and have kindled the torch of faith within the hearts of men, rest. She requested that she be permitted to carry on in spirit, because she was zealous of my divine law, and would not allow it to be blemished. Thus, I conceded to her wish. I gave her another mission at that moment when I said, Damiana, it is not my will that the troubled waters mix with the clear waters. Place yourself alongside the guides so that their torch of faith may increase in them each day. Rejoice, and whenever you are, delight in these people. Look at the multitudes who love you and have recognized me. They follow the footsteps that you left for them. Notice that the torch of faith is still burning. The Master has said, He who sows love, reaps love. He who sows light, reaps light. You have struggled in preparing the understanding of the spokesman and in clearing the way of my chosen ones. Behold your seed. In truth, I say to you, O my people, it is Damiana, the chaste maiden, who, in representation of Mary, has come during the third era to give you tenderness and affection. Blessed are the maidens who follow those footsteps, for I will bestow my grace upon them. And all of you who are my children, it is my divine desire to convert you into disciples, because the moment of my departure is near, and I wish to leave you as teachers among mankind. Proceed slowly, so that you may reach the end of the footpath and be the strong ones of the earth, through humility and charity. Men who have become materialized in this era have also called me. In them, my voice has resounded spiritually, and the Master has given them peace in abundance. But although I was with them, they have rejected me and desired to sow a different seed. At this moment I receive you and give you my essence and my light for which you have waited so long. Do not judge your brethren who find themselves outside of the path of truth, for you do not know whether tomorrow you also will become confused in other paths. Plead, therefore, for the lost and for those who have fallen. I separate you from confusion and give you milk and honey. Today, I have come to repeat my word, reminding you of teachings of past eras. However, I do not come to remind you of the communion in the form that Jesus symbolized during the second era with bread and wine of the earth. The time in which the physical bread was offered in representation of my word has passed. Today, the bread is my word and the sacred wine is the divine essence which I grant you spiritually at every moment. Feed and nourish yourselves, for that is my will. Convey the truth to the one who feeds on falsity. Bring the non-believer before me, so that discord and disunity disappear, and so that the bread of eternal life may come to all my children. Because if you have been on the verge of falling, my love has come to save you. Like an anchor of salvation, my spirit, full of mercy, saves you from the storm. When you have believed yourselves alone in a moment of hardship, I have made you feel my presence to strengthen your faith. 
Then your lips have hushed. When you were beginning to blaspheme, saying to me, Lord, if you say I am your chosen one, why do you permit my own brethren to harm me? O oh, little ones who are still not resolved to be my disciples, when I have said, Blessed is he who is touched and can be strong in that test, and in it forgives his brother and blesses my name, because the light will emanate from his being and will convert to my doctrine the one who has rejected it. Every good deed will have its reward. That which will not be received on earth but in the hereafter. But how many of you would like to enjoy that glory here on earth, unaware that he who does not work toward his spiritual existence will be without merits on entering it? Therefore, his repentance will be great. Little by little, my doctrine will make men realize the essence or goal of life. And this brief passage on earth will be helpful for the advancement of the spirit. But for that, it is necessary for you to forgive one another, so that enlightenment and peace will emerge from mankind. But if you, who are my disciples during this era, do not set an example with your virtues, who will humanity depend upon? Understand that this is being revealed to you by him who gave his blood and his life, loving and forgiving a multitude that judged, sentenced, and crucified him. But the truth, which is life and also love, is immortal. And behold, it is here anew among you when my spirit communicates through a human faculty. My word of this era comes to repeat to you that lesson, which says, love one another in the same manner that the master loves his disciples. I have also come to explain it so that every mystery may be brought to light, and that book which I willed to you and which men later concealed or closed will be opened again before you. Many veils will be removed. My word is the sword of light, which destroys all darkness. Many hidden lessons will be exposed, and unknown teachings will be revealed. Many mysteries will dissipate. However, you will not find these revelations in earthly books, but only through this word. Anyone who truly wishes to be a son of light must respectfully penetrate the depth of my word, and there he will behold his master waiting to teach him. Truly, truly, the doctrines of men are not the ones which will make peace in the world and save mankind from its abyss. Behold the religions ignoring one another, professing to be teaching my doctrine. That is why, at this time, those who are destined to be my emissaries, my new disciples, are being cleansed and purified, so that they may be worthy of conveying these good news to their brethren. During the second era, there were 12 disciples who spread my doctrine throughout the world. In the third era, 12,000 of each tribe will be the ones to make my teaching of truth and love known to all mankind. Where are those 144,000? Elijah is reuniting them, without it being an obstacle that some are in spirit and others incarnate. All will be united spiritually in this divine work. You will be witnesses to great events, many of which will surprise you, but I will enlighten you with my lessons, so that you will never be confused. Study my word, for it will inspire love toward your father and your brethren. 
It is not necessary for you to belong to the 144,000 to be able to serve the Father or be named disciples of the Master. Those who form a part of this number are just the ones who will open the way and be as guardians of my work. Today I come in spirit. During the second era I was visible to the eyes of men, for I became a man. Many, on seeing me, asked themselves, Who is this person who preaches in the name of God? And others answered, He is the son of Mary and Joseph, the carpenter. He is the Galilean. Then they scoffed at Jesus. But the son of the carpenter caused those blind since birth to see the light, and by these means they could contemplate the face of Jesus who healed them. These, on feeling the miracle of the caress of the master, shouted and fell at his feet, recognizing him as the promised savior. The amazed unbelievers asked themselves, how was it possible that that humble man whom they knew as an ordinary human being, could perform such marvels. Today I stand before you in spirit, and mankind cannot call me the son of a carpenter. But truly, I say to you, that not even during that period was it fitting to call me thus. It was written that a virgin would conceive, and in her womb the word would take on flesh. Joseph, the patriarch, was in the life of the virgin and the child only a guardian angel, visible to the eyes of men. On the other hand, Mary was the incarnation of the divine maternal love and mother of Jesus, who is the human face of Christ. With simple lessons, I will make you understand revelations which you regard as mysterious and which are not. I will teach you to pray so that you may elevate your thoughts toward the Father in your trying moments. During all eras, you have been taught the prayer. Moses made you pray on the last night of your stay in Egypt, and also throughout your journey across the desert. In the second era, I taught you the Lord's Prayer, so that, inspired by it, you would turn to the Father in your needs, always keeping in mind the promise of the coming of His kingdom, so that you would seek Him in quest of forgiveness, consulting your conscience as to whether you had forgiven your debtors in the same manner. Now I teach you the spiritual prayer, which does not come from the lips, but from the deepness of your spirit, which, with humility and confidence, says to me, Lord, thy will be done upon us. I taught you to heal. Jesus was the healing balsam. He was health itself. His word healed anyone who heard it. His hand gave health to whoever he touched. His gaze brought infinite hope to anyone who received it. Even his tunic, when touched with faith by those who approached him, burdened with bitterness and afflictions, restored their peace. And even his blood falling upon the face of the centurion restored his lost eyesight. Those miracles can only be realized through love as well as charity which is born of that love. With them, you can heal. Feel me very close to you. Evidence of that I have given you during the difficult moments of your life. I have wanted you to make your heart my dwelling place, so that you may feel my presence there. Why is it that you are not able to feel my presence when I am within you? Some seek me in nature, others only feel me beyond the material. But truly, I say to you, I am in everything and everywhere. Why do you always seek me outside of you 
when I am also within your being. When I tell you who I am, you have not listened or understood the voice which speaks to you. And when you have seen me, you are unaware of whom you have beheld. This has been proof of your lack of spiritual sensitivity. But you are approaching me so that I can teach you and not point out your imperfections. You come carrying within your spirit your past as a burden of restitution. I therefore withdraw your burden and give you rest. I remove your sorrow. I offer you nourishment, kindling within your heart a light of hope. How many hearts, hardened by the ordeals of life, have felt overpowered by the gentleness of my word? They have felt comforted, healed, and revived. That is the way that those who are to follow me attribute to my power and my love all that they receive, and their spirits will not forsake me any more. For their heart is filled with gratitude and love, and they will never exchange the whiteness of their spiritual garment for the royal gown of the wealthiest monarch. But there are those who remain with me, and in spite of receiving my word like a torrent of clear waters, they persist in their bad tendencies. Among these are the ones who imitate the chalice cane, when they feel that their offering is less pleasing before the Father than that offered by the humble who imitate the just Abel. They incite their heart with anger and envy, exposing their double-edged sword which they carry in their tongue to sow suffering among their brethren. And after leaving them sobbing or causing their death, they approach my sanctuary. They raise their thoughts to me and hypocritically claim that they love me. However, I do not reject these people with hardened hearts and understanding. Instead, I submit them to great tests and allow them to feel my word deeply. If they yield, they will have triumphed. If they rebel, they will have erred again and must wait for another time. I speak to you of all this so that you may be converted into my good disciples and be able to possess a true wisdom. Do not be boastful of your knowledge, for behold, the secret sanctuary of the Father is opened only to the one who knocks on his door with humility. If men of science, who move and transform your world, were inspired by love and righteousness, they would already have discovered how much enlightenment I have reserved for science of this era, and not that little bit for which they have shown so much vanity. Solomon was known as a wise man because his judgment, his counsel, and his decisions were clothed with wisdom, and his fame crossed the frontiers of his kingdom, thus reaching other countries. Although he was a king, that man knelt humbly before the father, asking for wisdom, power, and protection, recognizing that he was only my servant, and before me he placed his scepter and his crown. If all wise men and scientists would do it thus, how great their knowledge would be, and how many teachings would my secret sanctuary yet unknown reveal to them. You, O humble people, have received many lessons which have not been revealed to you by the wise or men of science. The mystery of the resurrection of the flesh has been clarified by the revelation of the reincarnation of the spirit. Today you realize that the goal of this law of love and justice is for the perfection of the spirit, so that it will never be lost, because it will always find an open door as an opportunity 
which the Father offers toward its salvation. My judgment for every spirit, by reason of this law, is perfect and inexorable. Only I know how to judge you, for each destiny is incomprehensible to men. Thus, no one is censured or exposed before the others. And after losing themselves in sin, from so many struggles and vicissitudes and much wandering, the spirits will come before me, filled with wisdom through their experience, purified by pain, elevated by their merits, weary from their long pilgrimage, but simple and joyful as children. O oh my people, be attentive to the times before you and listen to my word, for it is the way. Understand and comply with your mission, and endure your suffering with patience. For there is no pathway free of obstacles in order to reach the summit of perfection. The light of my word will unite all men during this third era. My truth will enlighten every mind, thus eliminating differences in creeds and worship. Today, while many love me in Jehovah and disregard Christ, others love me in Christ, ignoring Jehovah. While some recognize my existence as the Holy Spirit, others debate and divide themselves because of my Trinity. Now then, I ask this humanity and those who guide it spiritually, why do you drift away from one another when everyone recognizes the true God? If you love me in Jehovah, you are within the truth. If you love me through Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. If you love me as the Holy Spirit, you approach the light. You have only one God, only one Father. There are not three divine persons who exist in God, but only one divine Spirit, who has manifested himself in three different phases to mankind. And mankind, in its smallness, while penetrating the profound, believed to have seen three persons, when only one spirit exists. Therefore, when you hear the name of Jehovah, think of God as the Father and as Judge. When you think of Christ, see in Him God as the Master, as Love. And when you try to comprehend where the Holy Spirit originates, know that it is none other than God manifesting his infinite wisdom to those most advanced disciples. If I had found humanity of ancient times spiritually evolved, like the present one, I would have manifested myself before it as the Father, as the Master, and as the Holy Spirit. Then men would not have seen three gods when only one exists. However, they were not capable of interpreting my lessons. Thus, they would have confused themselves and taken another path and kept on creating accessible and insignificant gods according to their imagination. When men understand and accept this truth, they will regret having lived rejecting one another because of an error which could have been avoided with a little love. Know the law, love righteousness, practice love and charity. Allow your spirit the holy liberty of elevating itself toward its mansion, and you will be loving me. Do you want a perfect model as to what you should do and what you should be in order to reach me? Imitate Christ, love me in him, seek me through him, come to me through his divine footsteps, but do not love me through his human life or in his image or substitute the practice of my teachings with rituals and forms, because you will eternalize yourselves in your differences, in your enmity, and in your fanaticism. Love me in Christ, but in his spirit, in his doctrine, and you will be complying with the eternal law, 
because in Christ is contained justice, love, and wisdom, with which I have manifested to mankind the existence and omnipotence of my spirit. If Christ is love, do you believe that he would be independent of Jehovah if I am love? If the Holy Spirit is wisdom, do you believe that spirit to be independent of Christ when I am wisdom? Do you believe that the Word and the Holy Spirit are different from one another? It suffices to know something about the Word which Jesus taught to mankind in order for you to understand that only one God existed and will be only one forever. That is why I said through him, He who knows the Son knows the Father, for he is in me and I in him. Then announcing that in another time he would return among men, he not only said, I will return, but he also promised to send the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Consolation, the Spirit of Truth. Why should Christ come separately from the Holy Spirit? By chance would he not have within his spirit the truth, the light, and consolation? How little of my truth men have penetrated, and in that small portion in which they have penetrated, how much they have become confused. They believe to have reached the culmination of the truth, but while they live using the truth to lie, to kill, to destroy the peace and reject one another, which is the opposite of what my word teaches, men will not be able to say that they follow the path of truth. I am delivering my message to all of you during these times, the message promised to mankind through the lips of Jesus when he was among men. I know that in the beginning, this doctrine will be underrated for having been transmitted through humble and sinful people like my spokesman, but the truth that this revelation contains will command respect, and its teaching will be heard for in its essence is present the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and the promised truth. My peace be with you.